Hi guys, so I am here cutting my elephant for um, etching the, the little table. Um, you know, one thing that amazes me about the Cricut is the, the stops and starts on where it cuts. <laughs> it's almost like there's no rhyme or reason, but it's, it's pretty cool to watch. And I think I said that when I first got my machine, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I have to make a video of this. But still to this day, it, it, it kind of like blows my mind at, at the various stop, stop and starting points. But I'm cutting my big elephant here, so I will be back to show you um, if I was able to do it, lift up the entire elephant with to make it a decal, or if I ended up having to pick, weed the whole thing out. And then I'll show you the... Um, the etching process as well so I shall be back okay guys so real quick I just wanted to show you that um, my elephant is cut um, however I do see some bubbles let me back up here a little bit you see those bubbles I'm not quite sure why it's doing that um, there's a big bubble there uh oh is that on the Okay, so that's a piece that needs to be removed, so that might not be so bad. Um, so I don't know if these bubbles are going to cause a challenge with regards to um, trying to lift the elephant. So then I can use him as a decal. So before I weed this thing, I wanted to try to see if I could actually um, lift the entire elephant up I know it's a little hard to see guys I apologize you can see all my fingerprints there as well on the vinyl um, but I'm going to try to see if I can lift this elephant and use um, the cutout parts as a decal if not I'm going to have to weed the entire thing and then I will come back and show you if it if it was successful or not and then I'll come back and show you the etching part okay guys so I was successful at weeding out my elephant however my stencil needs a little bit of work so I'm gonna try to lift my vinyl and try to easily place my my um, these intricate pieces down um, I probably shouldn't even use this tool here because I don't want to poke anything. So I'm just going to have to like play with this a little bit, manipulate it. Um, this is what I was talking about. If you try to lift up the other piece, here we go. This is the decal. The decal looks so pretty. So that's going to be on my table, etched onto my piece of glass. So I was able to successfully remove um, the elephant. I see that the little eyeball that I pointed out in the other video is still there. I'm going to leave that there until I am able to fix my stencil and make sure everything is nicely laid out. Um, and then use more transfer tape to pick this up and then lay this on the glass. So the stencil or the, the decal looks beautiful. Now I'm working on a stencil. I don't like to waste anything, so I'm going to try to lift my vinyl, roll it out a little bit, just let things fall into place, and hopefully use this piece here for the etching. So I will be back with this one. Hi guys, Marilyn here. Um, okay, so here's the elephant that I was going to etch onto my table. And in my tutorial on how to create a stencil, um, I said if I was brave, I was going to try to lift up the elephant completely off the template and use this part, the positive, as a decal. Um, so this is, I'll lift it up because if I have it stick on the table, I will be so mad if I ruin that. So this will be, so this is a decal. I left his little eyeball in there still because I wanted to make sure that when I, did the stencil here let me move my my beautiful elephant over but here's the stencil and this half here was perfect until I got to here and that's where it all went downhill as you can see I ripped the vinyl 
let's see here you could probably see it there um let me get my pick tool i ripped the vinyl here and i thought okay well maybe i'll just overlap it and kind of make it work i ripped it there and then up here for some reason it was not laying evenly so then i i put a slit up here and this i could have actually put masking tape on there but then i just couldn't get this part layered evenly so then i snipped it and i thought okay well i'll cover that up um maybe tape it down but you know what i'm gonna have to probably recut this um i accidentally ripped it here right there so um the decal looks great so when i go ahead and do this again what i'm going to do i hate to have to waste this piece however um i might even cut some of this out square cut this square out cut this little square out because i don't like to waste anything and sometimes i need something small so um so yeah even though i tried it the stencil like all of this is perfect over here but as you can see it is a little thicker some of the pieces are a little thicker um, but when i got over here it just got a little more intricate and um, I was not able to save my stencil. And when I do this elephant, I wanna make sure that when it goes on the glass, which I have right here behind me, here's the piece of glass. So let's pretend. So the glass isn't that big, like I said, but isn't wouldn't that be so pretty etched into the glass here? So I'm gonna go ahead and recut my elephant um, and then I'm just going to have to weed it out because if I try to do this again, I'm going to have the same issue whereas um, um, I'm going to break pieces and this part here, all these little swirls and stuff, they're not going to sit um, very well on there. So I'm going to go ahead, recut the stencil, and then when I start doing the etching part, I will come back. But isn't that a beautiful little elephant there? That's going to look so pretty on something else. i got to figure out what I want to do with that. Maybe even put it in a um, one of those clear frames where the it's just clear glass all the way through. Um, that would be pretty. Um, but I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do on that. So, unfortunately, my stencil was a fail because I did try to save the decal. So I'm going to have to cut it again and... The next one, I'll just weed it out. All right, I shall return. So as you can see, my elephant is still attached to my mat, um, the large mat. Um, now, because I did have to cut it a second time, um, this is the decal from the first elephant, which looks absolutely beautiful. And I had to cut the template again because when I tried to lift the template, all of this, this section here uh, with all these intricate pieces, it just wasn't laying down flat. And then I started ripping it. So I cut another one. This one I weeded out. Um, so now I have my contact paper on here. This is what I like to use best for um, transfer tape. So you can see it does a, a good job as far as lifting goes. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to the glass. I do have to wash my glass and run some rubbing alcohol against the glass just to make sure that there's no particles or anything and it's nice and clean. I'm not going to videotape me trying to lay this on there. <laughs> That'll probably stress me out a little bit. This is a big piece. So I'm going to go ahead and um, clean my glass. Then I'm going to lay this on the glass. Once I have this on the glass, um, I'll go ahead and put etching solution on there and I'll come back. Okay guys, so I have laid my elephant onto the glass here, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to burnish, I'm going to burnish the, um, my elephant. I see bubbles in there, but that's just from the contact paper. I like to use contact paper for transferring. Um, you see these bubbles here? They roll out. All right, so 
Um, I like to use contact paper for my transfer tape. Some people don't like it. Um, it's pretty much personal preference. It has worked for me. So this is what I usually use. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. Oh my God, see there's a bubble right there. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but I'll bring it up. There's a ton of bubbles here. So I'll roll those out, but I'll also heat this up with my heat gun so that we don't have it. So the adhesive um, activates a little bit and we have no chance of glue getting or uh, etching solution won't get underneath this piece. I'm going to save this large piece of contact paper because it's still good. So let me grab the backing of that. Alright, so that's a good piece to use. Alright, so you can see a lot of bubbles here. There's a little bubble right there and I just rolled him out. See, see how they disappear? Let me get up close a little bit. Um, there is a bubble right there. We're gonna roll that one out. It's kind of far from, from where the etching solution is gonna go. Let me grab a smaller scraper. That's okay, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I see a boo-boo here. Where the foot is at? Mm. Shoot. Okay, so now I just created a big bubble, but there was a lift right there on that detail, so we're going to roll these bubbles out. I'm only concerned at this point if there's any bubbles like there's a bubble right here we need to roll that one out so he's gone where else there's a bubble there bubble there there's a bubble in the center of that I don't think that's gonna do harm but I don't like having bubbles there because I don't know if they if I accidentally rub something and if it pops then I'm going to create a, a hole for the etching solution to go into. And I want to avoid that as much as possible. There's a bubble right there. Let's see, is this in frame? Yeah. You can see that there's a bubble there. Let me get my Cricut scraper. There's a bubble there. And he's out. He's out of there. Okay, so we don't have any bubbles that are close to... Where they're going to enter. There's one right there. He's out of there. There's a tiny little bubble right there. I'm going to roll him out. I'm um, sorry if my head is in there. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good to me. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and heat up my vinyl just a little bit. Just to activate that adhesive. So that... So that it doesn't um, lift. Sorry, I had to go underneath my table here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and heat this up a little bit. Sometimes the bubbles shrink. You can see that. But I don't want to pop them. And you don't want to hit this... Um, you don't want to have a lot of heat on here too long. Um, sometimes this helps the bubbles go away. Now if I had a bubble that was here, I can actually roll it out with the heat. But we're not going to do that. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I just want to make sure that the adhesive underneath gets nice and warm. I'm going to let that sit for a minute before I mess with it because I don't want to rip my I don't want to rip my vinyl. Okay, yeah, so that's nice and warm. 
I don't want to mess with it too much because I don't see anything that would cause a problem. Um, see that bubble's on its way out? He's gone. Um, this bubble, I'm not going to worry about. It's not close enough to the edge. That one is. That one's gone. I'm going to just roll him out. That one is out. So we're just going to burnish this a little bit. I'm just concerned about making sure that there's no bubbles near where it needs to etch. Okay. Those, let me get those out. There's one right there. Got it. All right. This one's kind of close, so we're going to roll him out. He's inching slowly that direction. He's gone. All right, so I don't have anything that I should be concerned about looking at this this way. So I'm going to tape the whole thing down. I'm going to tape my, my edges, and then I'm going to go ahead and... And I like to double the tape around the edges where, where the seam is at. Um, when you use masking tape and it looks like when you're done etching, um, it looks like you have a line of solution. It's not that. It's your masking tape that's stuck to the glass. So after you wash the solution off, um, if it looks like you need to, um, the glue's not coming off with soap and water, just use rubbing alcohol. The 90% is really, really good for that. This is going to be so pretty. And even though this is covered, I'm still just on the safe side. I'm going to cover some of those bubbles. Uh-oh. We don't want to get his little leg because we want that to be on the glass. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to open up my etching solution. I always open it, shake it really good, and then I always open it over a garbage can because when it dries, a whole bunch of particles fall off. And then... Um, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and with my handy. So now you can see all those crystals on there. Actually, what I'm going to do with this one, I'm actually going to, it's been storming all day today here. I'm actually going to use my, my sponge brush. I have made such a mess in my craft room, so while this is etching, I will probably clean my room. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and lay this on thick there. I don't want to pour it. I just don't... Well, should I pour it? I haven't etched anything this big. Uh, the final size of this is actually 11 and a half. I didn't do 12. Um, cause I wasn't sure about the edges. I haven't even built the table yet. Um, so I don't know how far, um, the ink, the, the wood goes on the glass. So I just wanted to make sure that it was visible. All right. So as you can see, there's a ton of crystals in my solution here. So those are the pieces that I'm going to have to work with. I probably won't do that on camera because that's going to take a while to remove those. Um, I like to lay this on really thick. Um, there's a lot of crystals on here. 
And I don't know if I'm the cause of that. I could be. Who knows? Um, for putting all my solution. So like when this dries or after a half hour when I see that just sitting on top of there, I'll take my butter knife and scrape it all off and put it back in the jar. <laughs> so I could be creating those crystals in my solution. Who knows? Um, I noticed the crystals a lot when I bought the big one. This big container. Okay. So I have a lot of coverage here, so now I just have to work at, um, yeah, you know what, the, la the, la the, the other big piece that I did was for my daughter. It was actually um, a Beauty and the Beast shadow box that I made for her. As a matter of fact, I'll show you that. All right, so I'm going to remove some of these crystals there's a lot of crystals I have to make sure that they're not on the parts that I want to etch because it'll leave these little ghost spots so I'm gonna do that off a of camera there's a lot to do and um, I'll come back I'll show you the Beauty and the Beast box I'll clean my craft room while this is um, working but the first thing I'm gonna do is get all these little crystals off you see all those little bumps right there? Those are all crystals, so I'm going to have to sit here and just drag them all onto the, the parts that aren't going to be etched. So that might take a while for this one because it's kind of big, and I will return. So as you can see, there are no crystals left on my elephant. It's been sitting for a little while now. Um, I'm not going to rinse it off or do anything with it just yet. Um, I did end up moving the crystals with this old... Um, these tweezers and um, so I'm gonna let that sit I had to build the little table which took nothing but five minutes so I will return once again it's been a little longer than a half hour um, I had to build the table which took about five minutes and I've been cleaning and organizing my craft room and time got away from me so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this off and I'll be right back to show you the results Okay guys, here is the final product. Look how beautiful my elephant looks. There's no ghost spots on here either. Oh my God, this is beautiful. It's perfect. So again, the longer you leave your etching solution on, um, the better your, your piece is going to look. Look at how pretty this is. Isn't that gorgeous? You could do this with your Cricut machine, die cut, whatever you like. There we go. Unfocus a little bit right there. But wow, look at that. Isn't that so pretty? There's my elephant, my etched elephant. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of space left on either side of the elephant. It's perfect absolutely perfect I love it so I will come back and show you the finished table I couldn't finish building it because this needs to slide into the table and um, it needs to slide into the table and then uh, the other side of the table gets screwed in so let me go ahead and finish the table and I will return okay guys here is the finished product my little elephant my etched glass elephant table. Like I said, the table is quite small, um, but the etching on the top of this table looks absolutely gorgeous. Ta-da, it's so pretty. No flaws, the etching on here came out perfect. I had no leaks, no seepage on the side of the table or anything like that. I thought that that was a flaw right there with that little thing sticking out, but when I refer to my decal, that's actually part of the tribal uh, look of everything. So that's the decal, and like I said, I had to do it twice because when I tried to remove this decal, I actually messed up the uh, stencil part of it, so then I just weeded the second one out, and because I 
then that gave me a perfect stencil. Um, I don't know if any of you Cricut users do this, but what I did this time around to, um, I didn't remove my stencil from the mat. I weeded it from the mat and then I used my transfer tape for the stencil. Again, I left everything on the mat until I lifted up the stencil with my contact paper and it was flawless. So sometimes when I peel back the vinyl from the mat, everything will roll up and bubble up and fall apart. But I found that today doing this method, when I, leaving everything on the mat, lifting up the stencil, weeding it and everything from the mat, it came out perfect. So I'm thinking if I would have done that the first time and lifted off the decal portion of it from the mat, while it's all stuck to the mat still, I think the stencil would have came out perfect and I wouldn't have had to cut it twice. This was the first decal that I lifted from the stencil. I couldn't save the stencil, but I think that if I would have left it on the mat, I could have saved the stencil and the decal um, because it was nice and flat. Everything was nicely stuck down. It was burnished very well, so I had no problem um, lifting this up after from the mat. So, isn't that so pretty? I love it, I love it. And so I did my elephant 11 and a half inches this way. Um, there's the same space right here from his tusk. As you can see there is about the same amount of space from his foot there. So I think I centered it out pretty well. I did center the glass on my um, my mat that's on my table in my craft room. So I kind of looked at the measurements, found the center point, and that was helpful to have that underneath the glass as well. But here it is once again. Beautiful. I love this. Came out gorgeous. I have this aloe vera that I also picked up from um, Ikea, but I want to put a bamboo on this table. I know I didn't pot it right. Um, I just threw the little thing that came with the plant and then put it in this thing. Um, I know that needs to be potted properly, but I have my little gold containers. I get fingerprints everywhere. And there's two more down here. Here's the watering can that matches. But I would like to put a bamboo on this table. I think that would be much better. Um, so there it is. Looks beautiful came out perfect no flaws and you can see the etching very very well on here there it is if you see a little bit of shadow that's the reflection from the glass underneath nothing seeped out all the lines are nice and clean it's perfect and I love it I hope you love it too so if you like this um, please like it and subscribe to my channel for more um, DIYs Thanks for watching.